Imagine you are an 80s or 90s kids living in India. Every time there is a cricket game, doesn't matter if it's a test or an ODI game, the hype and excitement before every single game is unimaginable. Many of us would have even skipped schools and universities to watch this game, not wanting to miss even a single ball bowled. The moment we see Sachin and Shaywag walking into the pitch or Zahir Khan getting ready for his first spell, there are no words to explain those feelings running through every Indian cricket fans. When India lost 2003 World Cup, it literally took months to recover from that pain. But honestly speaking, when India lost World Cup Finals, even before the game ended, everyone just moved on. Are we missing something here? Why we do not have the hype and excitement to watch the same game now? Did we lose something on the process of making this game better? That's exactly what we are going to witness in today's video. This video is going to be lengthy, but I promise you all to keep it engaging. So without wasting much time, let's get started. To understand this scenario better, we need to step back in time. In 1983, the World Cup was held in England and Wales, with eight countries participating. Among them were big teams like West Indies who were the reigning champions, which also had great players like Sir Vivian Richards and Joel Garner. Additionally, there were great contenders like Australia and also home favourite England, followed by Pakistan, Zimbabwe, Sri Lanka, New Zealand and India. It was very clear that India was not the favourites, with mostly fresh leg except Mohinder Amarnath and Sunil Gavaskar. The Indian team was led by young and energetic Sir Kapil Dev. India also started this tournament by defeating the undefeatable West Indies and setting up the tone. As the tournament got progressed, India got better and better and finally India won the World Cup again by defeating the world champions West Indies. It was a shocker for the entire world. A nation at this point still recovering from the damages done by a century of colonization, coming to the tournament with zero expectations and winning the World Cup. Until this point, England was the only country which had all rights to host a World Cup as the game was founded by the English. But the Indian cricket board had other ideas after winning the World Cup. Our BCCI president NKP Salvi decided that the next World Cup should be hosted in India. This statement triggered a lot of laughter and critics among all the ICC cricketing nation. A country like India at this point, which has not even hosted normal tournaments, was questioned about its ability to host a World Cup tournament. Questions were related to infrastructure and the funds needed to host the World Cup. To answer all these critics, President Salvi decided to organize a tournament within Asia, including Pakistan and Sri Lanka, later in 1984. He also named the tournament as Asia Cup without asking any decisions from ICC. Since at that time, BCCI did not add any infrastructure and the funds, they combined forces with Pakistan Cricket Board and with the help of at that time Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi and fundings from Dhirubhai Ambani. ICC agreed to this proposal. In 1987, India and Pakistan hosted their first ever major tournament in sports, solely orchestrated by one single person called Mr. Salviji. At this point, every common man might have assumed that Indian BCCI might have tons of money after hosting and World Cup, but the truth was exactly opposite. To understand this better, let's decode how cricket makes money. First on the list is sales and broadcasting rights. Next on the list is a sponsorship deals from companies. And next we have merchandising sales. And also we get huge monies from tournaments like IPL. At last we have licensing and gaming. So out of all the revenue source we discussed, in 1987 World Cup, the only source of income was from ticket sales and ground ads. This all changed when South Africa came on tour to India. When South Africa's cricket ambassador called Ali Bakar suggested to BCCI President Jagmogan Dalmia to sell the broadcasting rights to South Africa media company, BCCI made their first ever big deal worth $200,000. We should also remember that during 1980s, that's when India as a country was growing exponentially in terms of financial and economic well-being. In India, the only sports everyone loved to watch was cricket. 
Now all major media companies started fighting to win every single broadcasting series rights. This led BCCI quickly by 1995 to become the world's richest cricketing board. This quick rise to superpower status did not stop there. BCCI President Jagmogan Dalmia contested in 1997 ICC chairman election and guess what? He even won the election to become first ever president from Asia. Seems like everything in this kahani or story is going well, right? But the first remarks on Indian cricket all started when in 2000, the Central Bureau of Investigation launched an inquiry into match-fixing allegations and its report known as Mudgal Report named several cricketers including Indian players. One of the most prominent figure impacted was former Indian captain Mohammad Asaruddin. After all these allegations, people in India started believing that all the games were decided or fixed even before it started. To bring back hopes, BCCI decided to do major changes in quick time, made Saurav Ganguly as our new captain. This exact period of time is called the second golden era of Indian cricket, where we had fresh legs like Shevok joining with the legendary Sachin Tendulkar, and with Rahul Ravid and Anil Kumble, Kaif, Yuraj Singh, Srinath, Zahir Khan as the star players. Saurav Ganguly not only added fresh legs, but also fighting spirit and aggression towards the team, which nearly led us to win 2003 World Cup. Then joined the captain cool of our generation, MS Dhoni, who led India win first ever T20 World Cup in 2007 and bring back home the first ever major trophy after 1983 World Cup. Bounded. In the air, Srishan takes it! India win! Winning the T20 World Cup opened doors for new league formats. This man called Lalit Modi was at the first vice president of BCCI had a strong vision to start T20 League in India with star cast all over the world and it was named as Indian Premier League. Indian Premier League's first season was started in 2008 with huge support from all over cricketing fans. At this exact moment, cricket started shifting from sports to money, glamour, gambling, politics, whatnot. As we discussed earlier on how exactly cricket makes money, IPL already started making billions of dollars from selling broadcasting rights and sponsorship. The fast phase also shifted from people waiting months to watch a game to people being pushed to watch a game. Before we add hardly 12 games in a physical calendar, now after IPL called as Indian Premier League, every week there is a game. Since BCCI main revenue came from IPL, BCCI made sure no other tournament across the world including ODI or Test is not played during the IPL season to not disrupt players from playing IPL. BCCI's huge power and money made everything easy. IPL also time to time produced world-class players for India, starting from Jadeja, Jasprit Bumra or Ardik Pandya, KL Rahul, Shikhar Dhawan and the list is endless. But IPL also started changing the players' game from concentrating more on IPL, which actually bought them huge money and fame, than playing for India. It's every Indian dream to play at least one single game for our country, but not anymore in this current generation. Let's take an example. Ishan Kishan, one of the star batsmen of Indian cricket team, rejected offers to play for India against England, saying personal reason, but also found him practicing separately on preparation for IPL games. Here we also have to make sure that we do not want to blame all the players. This is just an example on how exactly the cricket phase is shifting. Not to mention again, the last major trophy that India won was 2011 World Cup. Tony off in style. A striker. And 2013's ICC Champions Trophy. Ashwin, six in the bank. Treadwell misses, Tony misses but it doesn't matter. India win the Champions Trophy. Coming to the closing stages of this video, there are also tons of allegations in BCCI to not fund other cricketing nations like two times T20 World Champions West Indies, who could not even participate in 2022 World Cup due to lack of funding. It is also very evident that in 2007 World Cup, there were 16 teams that actually played the sport, but in 2023, there are only 10 countries. Imagine out of 195 countries, 
there are only 10 countries that are actually playing the World Cup. And the worst part is yet to come. From this year, IPL will not just be played for one and a half months, but instead two and a half months. More games, more money. Because this game is not just run by talents, but by ruthless politicians. Here are the few examples. Vaibo Galat, Rajasthan Cricket Board President, Rohan Jetli, Delhi Cricket Board President, and out of all, the most important, Jay Shah, Secretary of BCCI. Who are all these people? Nothing more than famous politician sons. In spite of genuine big stars like Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma are trying to keep this game alive, we should wait and see if BCCI is ever run by cricketers, not by politicians. Making this video was an emotional roller coaster. The intention was definitely not to bring negative comments for this beautiful sport, but rather uncover the truth. Let's end this video here. Again, thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, Sunil Cristiano.